Douglas Cooling and Heating. Serving the Birmingham area for 38 years. 988-3706. That's Douglas. I'm James Spann. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Friday, the 7th of January. Potential for a major winter storm for Alabama in the Deep South late this weekend into Monday of next week. Lots to talk about. Let's get right to it. Let's take a look at some of the sky cam shots around the uh, network this afternoon. First off, the view coming from Fayette. By golly, doesn't look like a winter storm approaching with that. Sky is sunny. Temperature's pretty comfortable today. We'll go down south to Demopolis, and by golly, they've hit 60 down there. Almost like a mild day. That's the uh, Tom Bigby River down below. And up at Mount Cheeha, it's colder up on the big mountain. And again, it will be very interesting to watch that sky cam in coming days. No doubt about that. All right, there's our water vapor satellite shot this afternoon. Big cold trough, vortex sitting over the Great Lakes. And while it's relatively mild Today, it will be turning colder tomorrow as the process begins, and even colder Sunday. There's a look at those numbers, looking good. Look at uh, Montgomery, 65, Tuscaloosa, 62, with uh, Birmingham sitting at 58. And again, one thing to think about now, the, the soil will be relatively warm as this thing begins on Sunday, so it might take a little while for the precipitation to get down and accumulate, but we think it will happen. There's our watch warning map. Uh, what you've got across Alabama, that's a wind advisory. Now, by the time you watch this, there's a good chance that all of these weather service offices will do one big coordinated winter storm watch for much of Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee, Arkansas. So this thing will light up like a Christmas tree uh, later tonight. And there's the QPF chart. And again, uh, that's just not good. Look at all that precipitation. This is valid through Wednesday morning at 6 o'clock. And uh, this is suggesting rainfall amounts of, or I'd say precipitation amounts of one inch. And, uh, you know, in a standard conversion, uh, that would be 10 inches of snow. But we all know that initially the snow will be melting as it falls on this warm soil, so it's not all going to accumulate. Some of this will be falling in the form of freezing rain, some way down south in the form of rain. So you can't do a direct conversion, but needless to say, uh, that is very problematic to see QPF numbers like that. I showed you these maps this morning. This is coming from H uh, for an INSEP from HPC. Uh, this is the uh, snow accumulation probability uh, of four inches or more uh, with this storm, and it's got it running from uh, just north of Dallas, Fort Worth, over to Huntsville and uh, near Greenville, South Carolina. The 12Z model runs have come a little farther south with that, and we've adjusted our forecast a bit. And there's the uh, greatest ice potential right through here. Uh, north central Alabama, the, the, the greater probabilities, again, from near Clanton over to about Augusta, Georgia. And let's take a look. This is the uh, 12Z GFS at noon tomorrow. Big vortex dropping south. It's going to be colder tomorrow. Uh, highs will be in the 40s. And there's your short wave over Mexico and the Gulf of California. That's the one that will be spinning up our surface storm. And down below that, again, tomorrow will be dry and colder. Highs in the 40s. Sunday, noon. And again, this is aloft. This is at 500 millibars. There's your shortwave trough over southeastern Texas. And let's get down to the nitty-gritty. Here's a surface chart. This is noon Sunday. Uh, and this is suggesting some precipitation could begin Sunday morning over southwest Alabama. Uh, Demopolis, Linden, Thomasville, Grove Hill. And it might begin down there in the form of freezing rain or sleet. Because it's going to be cold Sunday morning. We'll be in the 20s. Even down there, they'll be below freezing. But the big thing begins to unfold Sunday night at midnight. This is 12 midnight, and again, that's a classic snow look right there. Uh, the GFS has the, uh, the, the uh, just that perfect sweet spot right along Interstate 20. And uh, again, that's just uh, a great setup for a good snow through north-central Alabama. We'll check the, uh, the, the two-meter temperatures, and look at the freeze line all the way down to like Greenville and Troy and Eufaula. Uh, really, U.S. 84, and that's suggesting our friends in Montgomery and the U.S. 80 corridor could see some freezing rain problems here. That's rain falling when temperatures are below 32. There's a great concern down there for ice, I would say. You know, looking at the latest data, the greatest concern for icing might be U.S. 80. So uh, be aware of that if you're down there. And then we'll go to uh, Monday at midday, the, the, and the, this is a case where the low is not going to strengthen and deepen as it moves up the Atlantic seaboard. It's actually going to weaken, and notice instead of colder air being pulled in, the, the 
we warm up Monday and the whole thing could taper off with like light rain or drizzle on top of a big snow cover, as strange as that sounds. That is not a normal type setup here. We'll check the NAM, the North American Mesoscale model, Monday morning at uh, 6 o'clock. And goodness gracious, That's, if this is right, that would be a whopper of a snowstorm for uh, the Interstate 20 corridor, especially Birmingham over to Atlanta. Um, what would that be, you know, uh, 8 to 10 inches? In fact, uh, let me show you the uh, NAM accumulated snow graphic. Uh, yeah, 8 to 10 inches, even more in spots from Birmingham to Atlanta. And another strip of, of amounts of, of 8 to 10 inches from uh, near Millport and Sulligent over to uh, Jasper and Smith Lake. And notice the real sharp gradient down there in the bottom. And this is model output. This is no forecast. But again, it is a very aggressive model with snow. We'll check the RPM now. Okay, this is displaced farther north. Uh, the rapid precision mesoscale model. This is the accumulated snow valley through Monday morning at uh, uh, 9 o'clock local time. And it's got the heavier snow to the north over north central Alabama. So, uh, again, the, the new GFS and the NAM have come in with a heavier snow along Interstate 20. The RPM is farther north. So what are we going to do? Well, we'll just do this. Uh, this is the uh, latest projection. And, again, you know this is subject to change. And this is somewhat coordinated with the Weather Service in Huntsville. They're going to go with three to six inches for their counties up in the Tennessee Valley, and we'll go with that as well. That sounds good. So uh, Tennessee Valley, three to six inches of all snow, no icing. Now you get down to the Interstate 20 corridor, and you get into this problematic area where the skill is not that good in determining snow, freezing rain. But I think somebody within that north-central part of the state will see four to eight inches of snow. You know, most folks might get four inches, but on the high end, somebody in there is going to get six, seven, or eight. And that's why it says four to eight. And I do think there could be a few periods of freezing rain with a warm nose that still shows up in the uh, forecast soundings Monday morning or late Sunday night. The greatest icing could be south of Birmingham, say places like uh, Clanton and Ashland and Lineville and Roanoke. If you're down and through there, and again, even down to US 80, I've got one to four inches of snow down there. And again, mostly you know the lighter snow amounts, but the greatest concern from Montgomery, Selma, Demopolis, Auburn, Opelika, icing. And somebody, I think, down there below Interstate 20 will see enough freezing rain, and it might even be Montgomery, that US 80 corridor, for some power outages. So be aware of that. And again, like I've shared here, our skill is not that good in drawing up that differentiating line between snow and freezing rain this far in advance. This thing is Sunday night when the core of this will happen. So just be aware of that. And again, that graphic will probably change again as the event gets closer. And then Tuesday, uh, maybe a few lingering flurries in the morning. The air not really all that cold, but we do note that's a 1,044 millibar high coming down. So you got to respect that. It's going to be pretty cold Tuesday. And, and you know, people want to know, could there be lingering problems Tuesday morning? Yes, I think so, especially where you get five, six, seven inches of snow. That's not all going to melt Monday because we'll barely get out of the mid-30s on Monday. So just be aware of that Tuesday won't nearly be as bad as Monday in terms of travel. Uh, there's Wednesday, cold and dry. Thursday, even colder. Is that high noses in here? And again, look up here in the Northwest Territories. That's a 1,048 millibar high. The thing just recharges up there. And a week from today, still uh, cool and dry, but the really cold stuff is to the north. Now, on the 19th, uh, again, the, the model has shown a lot of variations out there and how this whole thing evolves. And, of course, we'll worry about this once we get past this winter storm. But there's your trough over the east. But the western ridge is not pumped up. It's not tapping that Siberian air. So accordingly, this run, not really that cold. But as you've seen, uh, we've shown over and over, the Arctic Oscillation spikes really hard and negative in through here. And uh, we, we still have great concern over a cold wave in this period, colder than what you're seeing right there. And on the 23rd, I uh, got a trough off to the west. That looks kind of wet. Hopefully by then, the worst of the cold wave will be over. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. And again, we've got the blog up and running with better capacity. We had some outages last couple of days. That should be resolved. Uh, Brian Peters will do the videos uh, tomorrow and Sunday. And of course, we'll have running updates over there. So just check the blog frequently for the latest. And of course, we'll be on television once this whole thing unfolds Sunday night. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and God bless.